Welcome to After the Oil Machine, following up with key contributors to the film, The Oil Machine. I'm Rachel Kaplan, Outreach Coordinator for the film. Today sees the publication of an urgent new report by Platform and Friends of the Earth Scotland about workers in the North Sea, titled Our Power, Offshore Workers' Demands for a Just Energy Transition. We're going back to the film's contributor, Jake Molloy, for an update. Jake is an Aberdeen-based regional organiser of the Rail, Maritime and Transport Union, who represents offshore energy workers and is a key contributor to the report. This report represents extensive interviews and surveys with over a thousand offshore oil and gas workers. What will we find inside? I think you'll find the, the strongly held views and opinions of many many, many workers across the sector, that they're being left behind. The concept of a, a just transition may sound fantastic for the, the wider public, but for for those workers, many of whom now are, are facing redundancy as a consequence of various matters, and obviously the, the main one being declining sector. Um, very, very concerned about the future. That's essentially the thrust of the report. And moreover, what those workers feel should be done in order to enable a just transition. So how significant is it that this report has been compiled by climate activist organisations? Well, I think it's a reflection on what we as, as trade unions have been doing for some considerable time, that we're, we're trying to bridge that, that gap between the what might be described as pro-oil, anti-oil groups. So we've been working closely now with Friends of the Air Scotland platform and others to try and broaden the debate, broaden the discussion here is if it's left to the markets, as was the case with oil and gas going back 30, 40 years, um, then this will pass us by, this will pass the workforce by, mm. and this workforce, much like the miners of, of the, the mid 80s, will be, will be abandoned and left, and communities will suffer as a consequence. How open to the interview process were the workers when they were approached by Platform and Friends of the Earth to take part in this um, survey for the report? Well, uh, as you can imagine, there was a, initially a, a bit of resistance. You know, it's it's been it's been a bit of a, a struggle to to convince workers of the benefits because of these polarised positions um, about pro and, and anti-oil. Um, and the, the concern was that, was well, one worker put it, why are we getting into bed with the climate activists? We should be fighting to save our jobs. And it's been a bit of a, a process of engagement and information sharing to to get the, the message out to, to oil and gas workers that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some groups who take a very robust approach, uh, without naming them, but there's others mm. amongst the climate change activist group that genuinely want a transition to occur. It's not just about oil and gas workers, it's about addressing a, a climate crisis, about addressing a, a cost of living crisis, an energy security crisis, a fuel poverty crisis, and, and all of the other issues which face wider society right now. So in the report, we find uh, 10 demands that have come out of these conversations, ranging from fair work to things impacting climate, just transition, safety, and um, other issues around energy. Um, what are your hopes? What, what can happen now that the report is out? I'm hoping it's read, obviously, by the wider public to, to make them realise that this isn't some left group looking for demands for better pay conditions. This is 
this is a collective effort on the part of a group of workers, activists, society, looking for a better future for everyone in the country. Political will will make this happen. You know, it's happening in Norway, it's happening in Denmark, it's happening in the Dutch sector. Um, even the Americans are, are making some headway and ensuring that workers are protected and society benefits from the exploitation of their natural resources. We, here in the UK, sadly, continue to support this free market economy, which invariably means that workers suffer as a consequence because corporate, corporate greed will always dictate the benefits to society and the benefits to, to workers caught up in the, in the, the services that being provided. And we're talking about energy here. We're talking about keeping people's, people's lights on, homes heated, and addressing fuel poverty, as well as those issues affecting workers in the sector. You mentioned that you hope the public read this report. How else could the public get involved at the moment and support moves towards a just transition? I think ultimately the public need to get right to their MPs. You know, these people, like me, um, they're elected to represent the constituency and the public are that constituency. And the public need to be aware that there is a different way, there is a better way, there is a way in which they can enjoy security of energy supply, cheaper energy supply, better energy supply, delivering better returns for society. Um, I often reflect on the, on the Norwegian model, um, which has prevailed for, for 40 years, and it sees the, the Norwegian energy company, Equinor, here in the UK, building one of the biggest wind farms on the planet off the coast of the east coast of England, generating returns for the people of the state of Norway. Um, I think that speaks volumes about what can be done and should be done. Thank you, Jake Molloy, for joining us here today. The film The Oil Machine is now available for community screenings wherever you are. Find out more at theoilmachine.org.